The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... definition, an event or effect contrary to the established order of things, a wonder or a wonderful thing. This is the story of a miracle that took place at Christmas time, the very best of all possible times for miracles, and it begins with an ad which has appeared for ten years in the Dawson City Times and the Thomasville Courier. We'll begin the advertisement with, if the owner of a Santa Claus suit rented to Jennifer Swallow will present his copy of the receipt to me, Jasper Crown, he will be re... Oh, you'd have to include your address and your phone number, etc. Of course, Jenny, we'll include that. He will be remunerated to whatever degree he asks up to a million dollars. Does that seem fair? Oh, it isn't fair. It's silly. The rental was less than a dollar. Why should it be worth any more than that? Maybe you'll never know, but I will. And everyone else who hears this story will know. Our mystery drama, A Very Private Miracle was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. and artless ten-year-old and a bitter, soured man who made himself old before his time. But however it ends, it begins with hate. What was that, Arthur? Uh, a rock through the window. That's an ugly mob outside. Yeah, no goods, inadequates, ingrates. Because you've taken their livelihood away from them. My livelihood as well. I can't go on losing money with the mill. Since Robert walks out on me, I don't need any more. But Thomasville does. Good Lord, it's the only real industry we have left to keep the town alive. Are you my lawyer or theirs? You know whose lawyer I am. My friend or theirs? That's a question which gets more and more difficult to answer. Jasper, it's Christmas. And Robert had good ideas for the mill. I don't want to hear any more about the mill or about Robert, my son, or my daughter. Most of all, I don't want to hear about Christmas. That cheap, tawdry, pagan celebration. There, at last. The riot. They'll break up that no-good rabble. That's my Christmas present to them. the police have dispersed them. Cowards all. A mob has no courage. Well, what are you going to do about the window? Close the room off. Heaven knows there are enough other rooms for me to wander through alone since I've been deserted by my family. Well, that's scarcely fair to Emily. Emily? Did I once really have a wife? Was there some warmth in this house? While my sister lived. Well, she's dead. Too many years ago for me to want to count. There's no one left but my housekeeper and me. At least Mrs. Murchison hasn't deserted me, as you want to. Go then, Arthur, go. It's safe now. The papers are all signed. Well, I won't execute these till after the holiday. 
The day after Christmas. The day after Christmas is Sunday, so I can't do anything until Monday. Very well, but the execution is signed, sealed, and delivered. When I sell the mill, I'll be not a millionaire, but a multi-millionaire. Or do you mean that crowd of hicks the police just chased away? You think I'm frightened of them? Oh, I didn't mean physically, and I didn't mean concerned either. I mean terrified for your immortal soul. Oh, don't trouble. I'll let myself out. Oh, this is my different. If I don't see you again before the great day, Merry Christmas. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Daly. Who was on the phone, Mrs. Murchison? Oh, such good news for you, sir. It's little Mary herself. What did she want? Sure, she's still on the phone waiting to tell you herself. I have no wish to talk to my daughter. Ah, but when you hear her news... What uh, news? Well, uh, uh, she, she wanted to tell you herself. If she's leaving that damn foreigner and coming home alone, I'll talk to her. Otherwise, go and hang up. Without listening to what she has to say? There's only one thing I want to hear from her... An apology. Oh, you're not going to talk to Miss Mary? No. I wanted to save the news for her to give you. Oh, but now, sure, I have to say it myself. It's a baby she's going to have. She wanted you to know you're going to be a grandfather. No, oh, some penniless foreigner. No, thank you. You can tell Mrs. Blumenthal it won't work. She's still as completely cut out of my will as her brother. When you hang up the phone, you can bring me a cup of tea. I'll be in the library. Oh. The good Lord favor me and put the words in my mouth. Uh, uh, Mary, sweetheart, forgive me for being gone this long. Well, that's all right, Merch, honey. Is Dad there? Well, uh, Mother, and to tell you the truth, He's after having a little bit of a light on, and, um... Well, it's all right. I know what he's lying down on. Any reconciliation with me. I thought, maybe the time of year and the baby... Did you tell him about the baby? Well, I... I didn't want to. I, I wanted it to be your surprise, but, uh... Okay. Forget it. I get the whole picture. Maybe I knew before I tried again. Now I know it's hopeless. Merry Christmas to you, Merch, love, anyway. And a happy new year. Oh, Mary, my darling. Oh, what's the use? How long can you fight? If he just wasn't so stubborn. If only Mr. Crown could forget himself and accept someone else into his heart. Come in. It's your tea, Mr. Crown. No, thanks. Just put it on the table. Yes, sir. Well, was there something else? Yes, Mr. Crown. This next Christmas would be my 25th that I've served your family. Oh, in heaven's name, spare me the Christmas spirit. It's choking me. Well, it's choking some of the rest of us, too, Mr. Crown. Everyone has a limit. You're not alone in that. I've just been talking to Mary, and I've lived through a long, difficult time in your family. I'm given my notice. Before dinner? I honestly don't care if you ever eat again or live. I just have time to catch the next bus. I'll send someone else to clear out everything that's left to mine in this house. I want no part of it, or you, ever again. A little while later, the front doorbell rang. With Mrs. Murchison gone, Jasper was tempted not to answer it. But when it rang again, some secret urgency drew him down the long corridor. On the walk, he winced. His elbow pained him, and the arthritis in his right leg jumped and sent shivers. Every ache and pain he had ever known seemed to assail him, till the magic moment he opened the door and saw, standing on the stoop, her freckles burning bright in her snow-white face, her pigtails stiff in the icy wind, 
Jennifer. And even though he didn't realize it, magic was upon him. Yes? Who are you? Jennifer Swallow. What are you doing on my doorstep? If you please, Mr. Crown, I'm freezing to death. Oh, you came here of your own free will? What do you want? I have a business proposition to put to you. Not interested. How do you know if you haven't heard it yet? Don't be rude. You're talking to your elders. Excuse me. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm just anxious. Anxious about what? My proposition. What I want to talk to you about. All right. What is it? I'm too cold to tell you here. My father says that no gentleman keeps a lady waiting. You're no lady. You're just a child. And you're no gentleman. You're a... A what? You're a kind man who's going to offer me shelter. <laughs> Very well. Before we both freeze to death. Come in. Come in. Thank you. You shouldn't have let me in, you know. But you was. Get in. My father says you should never let a salesman get his foot in the door. Are you a salesman? Oh, no. It's just an expression, you see. In a manner of speaking, so to speak. What is it you want, young woman, young lady? My name's Jennifer. Jennifer? I'm not interested in names. All I want to know is what your business is here. Shouldn't we go into the parlor? No. You're kind of old. I thought you might want to sit down. Well, uh, maybe I'd better. It would be much cozier. Very well, then. Follow me. Even though it is quite cold, it's very nice weather for this time of year. What? I'm just making conversation. My father said... I don't believe it. Believe what? I don't believe your father ever gets a word in edgewise with you around. All right. It's warm in here in the library. There's a fire. You can sit over there on the other side of the fireplace. Thank you. So many books. Ah, a lot of knowledge in the world if you young folks would take time to pick up some of it. Now, Miss, uh... Uh, Jennifer, just what is it you want? Well, it's at the church, you see. Nobody is working this year on account of you closed the factory down. You blame me for that? Oh, no. I mean, that's your business, of course. But it meant somebody had to do something special. About Christmas, I mean. I might have known it. <laughs> Sending a child here to blink her innocent eyes at me. Who put you up to this? Who sent you here to ask for money? No one. I swear. Don't lie. For a moment, you almost fooled me, young lady. But I might have known there was something behind this. There is, isn't there? Well... What is it? Present for the church? Oh, no. I already won those. For win the booty. You... You what? I said I already got those. For win the booty. You know... No, I don't know. What is win the booty? It's on television. Don't you watch it? I don't have a television set. Oh, it's fun. The man asks you questions, you see. And then you have to answer them. And that's what you did? Of course. Why are you so surprised? I'm just amazed that you didn't ask him most of the questions. So you won some prizes, eh? Oh, scrumptious ones. So you see... See, we don't need you for that. You don't say. But what do you need me for? Well, see, the presents are to be handed out tomorrow night at Christmas Eve. And we have no Santa Claus to do it. I wanted you for that. Of course. Because I'm rich and you thought that I might bring some extra presents. That wasn't it at all. Somebody else had an idea you should come here and ask me? No, sir. This was my own idea. Really? Just what's the matter with the guy who knows all the answers? Who? Your all-wise father. Oh, he isn't here this year. What's keeping him so busy? A first-class son of a gun. A, a, a what? His 
superior officer. My father's in the Navy. Both of them are. Who? My father and the first class son of a gun. That isn't exactly what he called him, but I promise not to repeat the other. <clears throat> I see. Well, if it can't be your... I mean a Santa Claus. Oh, <laughs> too skinny and too serious. He never understands a joke. He's really an old stick. But what on earth would make you think of me, child? You don't just want me to be Santa Claus. You have an ulterior motive. What's an ulterior motive? It, you, you want me to do something else, don't you? Oh, that, of course. You admit it. Oh, sure. We don't have a budget for the Santa Claus suit. So I thought if you'd be him, you could afford to rent it. Where are you going? I'm opening the door for you to leave, Jezebel. My name isn't Jezebel. That's a matter of opinion. Just keep heading for the front door. Then you won't leave Santa Claus? I'm afraid I'm not the type. You could be just perfect if you'd let yourself go. I wish I could believe that. Oh, couldn't you? Only one way I could. Well, how's that? You get me the Santa Claus suit, and if you still want me, I'll be your Santa Claus. Honest to Pete? Honest to Pete. Well, I'll try, but it's going to take a miracle if I do. You know, I wouldn't put it past you. Jasper Crown remained with his hand on the door. One part of him congratulating himself for having resisted that elfin charm. The child was just trying to use him and his wealth, as people always were, egged on by her elders, no doubt. But another part of him, lonely and forgotten and rusty with disuse, cried out for her return, for a miracle. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Never underestimate the power of Jennifer. That night, Jennifer broke open her piggy bank and counted her capital. Two dollars and twenty-three cents. The following morning, she bought a return trip ticket on the bus to Dawson City, which cut into her budget to the tune of one dollar and sixty-two cents. Once she got there, she set her jaw and started to comb the city. It was well after lunch when suddenly the freckles were dancing across her nose and her pigtails vibrating with delight. For there... Just as she told herself there had to be was a sign saying, Santa Claus suits for rent, dirt cheap. The proprietor was a wonderful man with a jolly round face and bristling white eyebrows and a shock of snowy white hair. As Jenny said afterwards, she almost wished he might be persuaded to come and play Santa Claus. Hmm, but that's really a silly idea. He lives too far away. I beg your pardon, miss. Did I say something? Well, there are only two of us here, and I I didn't say anything, so I think it must have been you. There I go again, thinking out loud. You couldn't. Could you? Or didn't I think that part out loud? Uh, what part? About wanting you to come and be Santa Claus in Thomasville at our church tomorrow evening. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't. Some other people are expecting me. Uh, but I can rent you a suit, you know, a, a Santa Claus suit. Do you do you see one that you like? Well, there are so many. What's this one made of? Ah, red velvet with ermine trim. <laughs> you you like it? <laughs> it is nice. How much would it cost to rent it? Well, now, that's a, a very handsome suit and quite cheap at the normal rental of a uh, hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Too much. Oh, much too much. 
Well, now, uh, uh, how much were you thinking of? Sixty-one cents. Sixty... Oh, <laughs> sixty-one cents, eh? Now, now, isn't that a coincidence? As a matter of fact, right down beneath the counter here, I may have just the thing. Ah, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> here we are. Well, let's see. Boots, belt, hat. Pants and a uh, tunic. And, of course, the whiskers to go with it. And the price happens to be just right. On the nose, as the saying goes. Sixty-one cents. It is pretty old and tattered. Yes, it is. Seen a lot of use. I have to admit it isn't in the best of repair. But it's the genuine thing. Well, it... Is pretty ratty. But I'll take it. After all, the price is right. And the kids who are going to see it won't notice the condition. Because to tell you the truth, these days our clothes are pretty ratty too. Well, righty, oh, I'll, I'll wrap it all up. And while I'm getting it ready, you can uh, uh, sign your name right here. <laughs> What's that for? Well, I'd like to get this suit back. You you might be surprised, but sometimes I have a, a little trouble. <laughs> this way, if you shouldn't return it, any time I want to claim it, I'll have proof that it's mine. <laughs> Why doesn't Mrs. Murchison answer that bell? Oh, of course I forgot. She's gone. Well, rot and tarnation. I have to answer it myself, I suppose. I'm coming, damn it, I'm coming. Oh. Well, you don't have to pull it out of its socket. It's please. It's so cold and freezing. Oh, it's you again, is it? Well, what is it this time? Look, I got it, I got it. Got what? The Santa Claus suit. I thought you'd be happy. Why should I be happy? Because you said. You promised. You're not going to Welsh out. Aren't you even going to invite me in? So you tricked me into a promise I should never have given. I didn't either trick you. Oh, no? Well, we'll see. Well, what are you standing out there for, child? Want us both to freeze to death in this drafty hall? Go on to the living room. I've had the window fixed. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown. Well, in you go. There's a fire here and it's warmer. It certainly is that. Thank you. So you got the suit, huh? Yes, sir. How? That's my business. <laughs> Didn't take you long to maneuver it once you found out I wouldn't fork out for it, huh? I... That's right, Mr. Crown. Well, sit down. Thank you. That all? Excuse me? I mean, can't catch your tongue, huh? You certainly had enough to say yesterday. Why so silent now? I'm disappointed. Why? Because you're not happy, too. About the suit, I mean. Why should I be? I don't know, Mr. Crown. But I was just sure, sure you would be. Well, you're wrong. I'm not. I made a bargain, and I'll stick to it. You don't have to. If you don't. I won't hold you to it. I mean, an unhappy Santa Claus wouldn't be much good. Do you want to? Want to what? Be unhappy? No, to get out of it. I don't even know if I can get into it yet. Close your mouth. You look silly with it open. Oh, come on. The suit, I mean, the suit. Come on, let's see it. I can't all but... Um, it is very difficult, not. Oh, give me that stupid parcel. Stop fiddling. Can't spend all night on this. Oh! Good Lord, and what ragtag did you find this flea-bitten outfit, huh? Huh? I didn't either find it. I rented it. Rented it? And just what did you pay for this threadbare collection of junk? It cost 61 cents. How much? More, when you count my bus there from here to Dawson City. A dollar sixty-two plus 61 cents. 
$2.23. My whole capital. And just where did you get $2.23? It was my tree money for Christmas. But I'd rather have a Santa Claus than a tree. So I broke my piggy bank and I hate you. <laughs> oh, stop it. Oh, stop. All right, I'll be your Santa Claus. Oh, I'll even try the suit on now if you like. Well, if you still want me, that is. I'll be a pretty gruff Santa Claus, but... Oh, shall I try the damn thing on? Yes, please. After all, I spent the money... And something is better than nothing, isn't it? Honesty, Jasper. The startling white honesty of a child. It's what you've been looking for, grasping for. Something to believe in again. And yet, too late. Too late. You're so conscious of the age in your body, the bile in your gut, your loneliness. That rheumatic elbow, that gnawing peptic ulcer, the tight place around your heart. Or is what you fear most, your mean and tiny soul. And while Jasper thought these private thoughts, he was slowly putting on the Santa Claus suit, shaking his head at each tattered garment and worn accessory that went with it. But as he put each piece on, watching through Jenny's eyes, each separate piece seemed to shine suddenly as luxuriously rich and sumptuous as the velvet and ermine suit she had first seen. And the whiskers were pure white and thick and curly. And the boots were like the most expensive Moroccan leather. But the biggest miracle of all was in Jasper. Gone was the constriction from the heart. The nagging ache was no longer dragging at his stomach. The rheumatic arm was loose as a whip. And the magic sponge had wiped the lines from his face and the meanness from his heart. Oh, super! Gloriosa! It fits! It fits! Like a glove. You look so different. I feel so different. Do I look like Santa Claus? Not look. You are. You are Santa. It's just perfect, only... Only what? Do you think you could, you know, just a little, even smile? Not only could I smile, I even think I could laugh again. Oh, try, Mr. Crown, try. You could call me Jasper, Jennifer. And you can call me Jenny Jasper. Hello, Jenny Jasper. (laughs) 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 Oh, Jasper, this is going to be a good Christmas. Oh, Jenny, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. (laughs) Now, Mrs. Templeton, now do you think? Yes. I was just coming to tell you, my dear child, that my husband said we are just about to commence. Mr. Crown, all dressed and ready. The Reverend isn't teed off, is he? Teed off? I mean, his feathers aren't ruffled. The Reverend is a saint, my dear. A perfect saint. Why on earth should he be angry? Well, Grandmother said he always played Santa Claus. And if someone else wanted to be it, He'd be mad as a wet hen. And I said, why is a wet hen mad? And she said, because its feathers get ruffled. Your grandmother, I should say your family in general, Jenny, doesn't quite understand a man of God. The minister, my beloved George, is only too happy to welcome back a sinner and a backslider like Mr. Crown. He would sacrifice any of his little pleasures for that. Oh, uh, which reminds me. Yes, ma'am? For some reason or other, Mr. Crown says he has to see you before he comes in. Oh, dear, I hope nothing's gone wrong. Because if Jasper's feathers are ruffled, this whole party could lay an egg. I thought we'd never get rid of that old stork. I told you. 
told you he was an old stick. <laughs> In the mud. <laughs> now, what I needed you for was to know if I look all right. Come over to the chair. He has the wig all wrong and the hat not not down over your nose, not sort of jaunty to one side. And he didn't put the rouge on your cheeks like this. Oh, and now you really look like something. Oh, Jasper, you look just beautiful. And so do you, Jenny. Oh, I don't matter. You're the star of this show. Now you go out there and twinkle. <laughs> Watch my stardust. Just call me Jasper, Jenny, and everything's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me Jenny Jasper, and I know it's going to be. <laughs> Here he comes, everybody, all the way from North Pole. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> been witness to the regeneration of Jasper Crown. A child's drive and belief has brought him back to the precious gift of present youth and laughter. But is it a true conversion or only a momentary aberration? Is the magic of this moment in the Christmas legend in the suit and in Jenny? What happens if he loses either or both. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. WBBF from Chicago. The church party was an exceptionally long one that year. And before it was over, Jasper Crown had indeed become Santa's alter ego. Many other gifts beyond those Jenny collected on Win the Booty were distributed. All of them from Jasper's generous purse. $50,000 to the church itself. Another 50000 to the community chest. And many smaller but not less welcome gifts. Then, with the party over, Jasper, after a long last hug with Jenny before she went home, returned to his own house. But however cold the empty old mansion might seem, Jasper, in his suit of red, was warm and glowing inside. And his first trip was to the telephone. Christmas greetings, hello. Happy Christmas, my darling daughter. Dad? Daddy? Yes, Mary. Your miserable old wretched stupid <laughs> I can't believe it. I I mean, you don't... Oh, oh, you never were stupid. And you certainly don't sound miserable, old, or wretched. <laughs> well, none of those. But I was stupid. How can I make up for it to you and... and Leon? Make up? Oh, Daddy. I wish you could be with us for Christmas. It's a little late for that, but... I have another idea. I want to buy plane tickets for you and Leon... To come visit me and ring in the new year with me. Oh, Daddy. A real good new year. Oh. I just called Robert, and he and his wife are coming home with the children. Oh. He's going to start up the mill again for me. It could be a real family reunion. Daddy, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, say yes. Please, just say yes. <laughs> of course it's yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Daddy, what happened? You said... Well, not only like yourself again, but like... But I don't know. Like the spirit of Christmas. Past and present. And future. You'll see, I hope, when you come home. <laughs> Mrs. Murchison. Come in, come in. His angels be with me. I thought, Mr. Crown, for a moment you were the real article. Oh, I can't claim that. I wish I could. Oh. But I feel as cheerful as him. What brings you here Christmas morning? Well, now, sir, I felt real bad. Particularly this time of year and all walking out on you. 
And here it's Christmas Day, and you even without a dinner. So I was asked to bring in a little basket here if you'd accept it. I accept it from the heart, and with my thanks. But I'd like to to ask you something in return. What is that? Will you come back to work for me, Merch? I need you. Oh, oh you called me Merch. Mary's name. She's coming home with her husband and her child-to-be for New Year's. And Robert and his family. Oh. They're moving back to open up the mill. I'll need you, Merch. Oh, the blessed Mary preserve it, so you will. I'm glad I'll be to come home. Good. But what is it that's come over you, Mr. Crown? A child brought me this suit, Merch. And putting it on, I went back to the man I was. I don't want to question either because I believe them both to be a miracle. And I thank God to have found happiness and peace again. Ah. And pray to him it will not be taken away from me. But every silver lining has a cloud. Every sky a rift. The worm nestles even in the heart of a rose. Jasper could not buy his happiness this fast, if ever, again. As she has been his angel, Jenny now becomes his nemesis. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Jasper. I didn't expect... Me to answer the door? Well, I saw you coming up the walk. I didn't mean that. I meant I didn't expect to see... I hate to say it, but I've come for the Santa Claus suit. No. What do you want it for? You'll have to take it off now, Jasper. Why? Because I signed the paper. I only rented it, and I'm responsible. I have to take it back. Again, Jasper. Oh, Jenny, I feel... I feel naked. It's the way I told you. But that's silly. You aren't the way you were at all. You're nice now. The way I always knew you were underneath. As long as I have the suit? As long as you have you. That's what counts. My father says... Oh, wait a minute. Tell the chauffeur. Here's the street. <laughs> was this one. Try the next. You watch one side, and I'll watch the other. You're not watching, Jenny. That's because I've already looked all the way down. It must be the next block. Why are you looking so sad again, Jasper? Because I feel that way. Not even sad. Frightened, Jenny. Why? I like the way I am. I didn't like the way I was. And I'm afraid that if I let go of the suit, I'll go back to being what I was. Never. Anyway, when we get to the shop, you can always buy it. Oh, tell the chauffeur to turn here. To the right. Take the next right, Edward. You sure this is it? Yes, I know. Because there's the hat factory and the cigar store and the man who cooks spaghetti in the window of the shop. And right there next to it... What? What, Jenny? Mr. Edward, stop and back up. See, Jasper? It's a dead-end street anyway. And there's that big school, and the storage company, and then the Chinese laundry. And right here between it and the man who cooks spaghetti in the window is... was... Stop the car, Edward. But, Jenny, there's nothing here but an empty lot. But there can't be, because otherwise... Then it would have to be a miracle. Yes. That's what it would have to be. But that's impossible. Why? Because miracles have to be about holy things. And they have to be very old. Well, what's holier than Christmas? And it's pretty old. I... I must have made a mistake. We'll just have to keep... Little Jenny, listen to me. This is a funny thing to ask. But I ask it with all my heart. Don't let's go looking anymore. Because we just might find him. 
And that's the thing I'm most afraid of. Why? Because then I'd have to give the suit back. And I might stop believing again. Oh, is that the time? The right time? Yes, what's wrong? I've got to get back to Grandma's fast. I'm catching a plane today. Edwards, home, step on it. A plane? Where to? Pacific. Japan. Back to my father. He's so lonely. I'm all he has. But Grandmother was getting old. And we were both going to spend Christmas with her. Only that first class son of a... I almost said it. Anyway, the Admiral said he couldn't spare my father because of the general situation. Oh, what am I going to do? About your father? No, about the suit. Jenny, why don't you let me handle this? I'm here, and your father and you are going to be on the other side of the world. How could you handle it? Well, let me tell you, and we'll write it down as soon as we get home. Santa Claus suit rented to Jennifer Swallow will present his copy of the receipt to me, Jasper Crown, my address, phone number, and so on. He will be remunerated to whatever degree he deems fair and equitable, up to, but not to exceed, the sum of one million dollars. This ad will appear daily till the first of the new year, and for the month of December of each succeeding year until the decease of the aforementioned Jasper Crown. Okay? But, Jasper, a million dollars for that cruddy old suit? I told you, it's worth that to me. Do you have to go, Jenny? You shouldn't have to ask. You know how fathers feel about daughters. Now I do. Your own daughter is coming back to be with you. And your son, too. You'll never miss me. Oh, I will that. Don't ever mistake it. But I'm finally realizing... All this fuss about a suit I thought was a key that unlocked my heart. When it wasn't the suit at all, it was you. I... I... I hate goodbyes. They're always sad. Why can't they be laughing goodbyes? Couldn't you laugh? Just a little? You said that to me once before, remember? And you laughed. I don't think anything could make me laugh now. I bet I could. Try it, Mr. Crown. Try what? That's not what you're supposed to say. What am I supposed to say? You're supposed to say, you can call me... Jasper, Jenny. And you can call me Jenny, Jasper. Hello, Jenny, Jasper. <laughs> Hello, Jasper, Jenny. <laughs> oh, oh, Jasper, it's been such a good Christmas. <laughs> the best, the best ever. <laughs> As she had to. And Jasper placed the ad in the paper. For ten years, it appeared every December as Jasper lived out a full and happy life. His family, grandchildren, and his mill workers filling every Christmas for him. Until early this December, when he died, peacefully and quietly in his sleep, grateful and joyful to go join his beloved wife. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Crown. I've been proud of you these last ten years. I've... I've felt at peace with myself. The suit is in that rosewood box on my bureau. And here's a blank check signed. Fill in what you want. Oh, no. This is paid in full. I'm more than at my rental. <laughs> but I will take the suit back because it is Christmas again. And who knows? It may be very useful to someone else, eh? <laughs> now, excuse me. It's a busy season <laughs> for me. <laughs> now that I go. Now, dancers, now, prancer and victim. Did you feel any 
that? I did. It's been most of it. Such a good life. And the best of it, you made. But I'm tired, Jenny. So tired. Say good night to me. jokes from everyone in the neighborhood, and what's more, they let it get in the way, Eberhard. Eberhard Edwards, those wings must go. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams.